Oh, good song, Cole. Did you pick that out this week? <laughs> Starting off with the UCLA fight song. And uh, we're representing today. Hold on, hold on. We only have one game to break down, Cole. You can just keep playing that a little bit longer if you'd like. <laughs> He's not answering me. He's an FC guy. Sunset Rewind, week 14. Oh, no, 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 no. You lost the bet. Turn or that week 13, off right episode now. 14. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, there's a malfunction. Wow, there's the USC there's fight song. Um, we don't want to alienate half our audience. The Battle of LA and essentially Southern California yesterday. Your gutty little Bruins got it done. How about my man Garbers? Ethan Garbers from Corona Del Mar. CBN, Speaking of Corona Del Mar, we're joined by Breck Clemmer today. Thanks for joining us, Breck. Thank you for having me. So, got one game to break down this week, and it's a great one. The it, Sea Kings, 28-14, victorious. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, a quickie this week because it's just, uh, there was only one game. Um, I, well, I for the Corona Del Mar nation out there, the, they're going to love this. You know, we can always uh, slow it down so they can uh, revel in it a little bit more and take it all in. Yeah, um, let's a couple things. There's a lot on the table. Let's talk about Huntington real quick. Yeah, uh, great season. I didn't get any film. Awesome uh, season. And in a way, I'm actually glad because breaking down the losses are brutal. And uh, it was a heartbreaker the way it kind of ended too. They gave Simi Valley all they could handle. Right. It came down to the last play of the game. They had their opportunities, and you know when we do our fan show, uh, zone show and we get all the comments, Huntington was just flooded with right. fans and support and they did a great job. In fact, we were at the CDM game and we were getting the results yep. and yeah. all the CDM parents were bummed out. Yeah. Like, oh, like they were, it was so cool. And even you, Breck, were well, talking yeah, about we're how bummed you were because that. that's your league, right? Yeah, you just root for the guys in your league in playoffs. So tough loss, but a great season nonetheless. A lot yeah. to build on. And by the way, the quarterback, Edmonds, broke the single-season passing record in that game. I think he needed two-something, and he was in the 300s. As a freshman. As a freshman. Wow. Last week, Gray broke the receiving yeah. record. So a lot for Coach Brown to build on, a lot coming back. And, you know, next year they're going to re-league, so they're going to be in a good league for them. Uh, you know, heartbroken for them, but a great effort nonetheless. Yeah, great season. It was a, a, a honor and a privilege watching them play all year and uh, getting to cover them and talk about them. So great job, Oilers. Uh, keep your heads up. It's going to be a great season for them next year. All right, now for some good news. Yeah, CDM. CDM 28, Yorba Linda 14 in a payback game. They uh, Remember, Yorba Linda took out CDM last year in the playoffs. So, you know, not only was uh, Corona Del Mar playing for a, a chance to get to the D4 title game, this was a payback game. And you have two really, really excellent teams out there that are both with excellent coaching staffs. And, I mean, just a great high school football game, great environment, everything. Well, Breck, you were there. You were part of that last year. I mean, it was like a 30-point wipeout. Did you feel like you guys had closed the gap enough to not only compete with them to beat them this year? Yeah, we felt last year we came to that game, we thought we were going to win, and we kind of just got – they wiped the floor with us, and it was really embarrassing for us. And this year, we kind of just thought back to last year, and not only played for our seniors last this year that play this year with us, but the guys that graduated last year that had to go out like that. And we just used that this week in practice, and we were just excited to get another shot at them. So was that one of those things last year? I, I get it. Sometimes in sports, you just the score isn't really indicative yeah. of the matchup. It just was one of those games that got away from you early, and they played great, did everything right. You guys did the opposite, so. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're necessarily 30 points better than you, but they yeah. just had a great game that night, right? Yeah, they were super well coached. They were just running the ball down our throat last year. Well, you know, Coach Bailey went yeah. to uh, school, Dole. UCLA, right? Played football there, yeah, too, as a matter right. of fact. So, We've seen uh, him uh, before in that alumni tent at some UCLA games. That's right. Well, yeah. let's get into this. Uh, we'll talk about all this on the fan zone. Uh, Cole, would you be so good as to pull up the monitor? Give us some seeking highlights here. Let's go and cue the music, Cole. We got the music going? That's how it gotten really popular with everybody. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. It's adjusting Back the cameras. Yeah. All right, let's go. The NFL film stuff. All right, defense kind of ruled the day in this game. Early on, Christian Brooks and Dylan Lane. Yorba Linda is trying to get outside, but they're just coming off the edge, shutting down the running game from Yorba Linda. They tried to go inside, but Colin Penny and, again, Christian Brooks going to do a nice job running downhill, filling the gaps, and just the Yorba Linda backs had nowhere to go. Now, CDM tried to get their run game going, too. Watch Caleb Annette. Boom, Boom, taking on the safety. Let's go. A lot of big hits this game, as you're going to see. Wow. Um, but your Belinda would strike first on a screen throwback. Holden again, the quarterback, would find Jason Escafar out of the backfield. Nice job by the offensive line blocking yeah, downfield. So early on, 7 nothing. your Belinda. You know, at this point, uh, Breck, were you a little nervous? Or 
I think we were just a little upset how we started slow because that's been a, kind of a theme this year, but we are trying to start out strong, but we never lost confidence in our guys. So. All right. Well, hey, by the way, props to Yorba Linda. They had their site packed. I they, mean, had it was more a great... guy, they had more people than we did. So. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Real yeah. quick, CDM is in the championship game. You need, if you're a CDM fan, to be at that game. The support makes all the difference in the world. Your Belinda actually traveled better. You're right. Yeah, the CDM. Now, CDM had a decent crowd. I'd say B minus ish. Right. I'm giving Yorba an A on attendance. So I don't care that it's Thanksgiving break. Get out there. It's potentially the last game of the year. Support these guys. They've worked their tails off. Um, they want to see you out there. All right. Yeah, no, no excuse. You know, it's the day after Thanksgiving. So most people yeah, don't have you that guys day off. Yeah. No school. Exactly. Let's go. Exactly. All right. <laughs> so uh, back to the game. Oh, we got to show that again. Christian Brooks. This guy, he was putting people literally on their backs. Watch him fill and just crush this guy. Breck, you have to ever have to go against him in practice? Old time. It's that a good, What's that like? It's not it's, fun, I mean, it? it makes you better, but he's scary. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Seaton would finally get going offense. Uh, they had actually run a screen two to Wyatt Lucas. Nice job downfield by the offensive lineman. So only two touchdowns total in the first half. Both were screens by both teams. So going into halftime at 7-7, did you guys make a lot of adjustments at halftime or was it more like sticking to what the game plan was and doing a better job executing? Yeah, we just had to execute. I think the game plan was there. Nothing okay. there was like different than what we expected. We just weren't executing what we were supposed to do. All right, so Owen Sanders. Now this is their outside zone. Uh, Coach Hedding really does a good job designing this. They scored against Santa Barbara last week around this play. He took it to the outside, but they do it weird. They try to reach the end, but then they insert with a pulling guard and a fullback. So the defensive end does a good job maintaining outside leverage but that creates a gap inside, so Sanders recognizes that, turns that up and in. He gets up to the second tackle, level and takes out the two linebacker. Two tackles, mm -hmm. right. So that's tough as a defense because you're trying to maintain outside leverage, but as you widen, you create that inside gap. So tough concept to defend. That, of course, is going to set up the pass. Caleb Annette finds our man Russell Weir in the end zone. Uh, so now the start of the th uh, third quarter, Seam will take the lead. Now, do you know this guy, Eddie Sissoko? How do you say that name? Susalek. Susalek. Yeah. Now, you see that little 10-yard marker here, and there's a 21 down here. Now, watch yeah. him. He's not paying attention. And what happens is he goes, <laughs> <laughs> did you know that? I did not he know that. Okay. But he got up. He's okay. That's funny. All right. Back to the game. 14-7 <laughs> <seven> C. <laughs> All right. More Christian Brooks. These are not replays. Boom. See that not next yet. snap? I mean, he was... That guy... I'm running out of words to describe he's a dude. what kind of player he is. Okay, Emerson Tingley, he's good too. Fourth and inches, Coach Bailey's going to get aggressive. They're on the 30 going out, so I give him credit for making a gutsy call, but the D-line does a good job submarining blocking. Wow. Allows the linebackers to come You see Brooks fly over there? Yeah. That? He did the Superman. Yeah, so, you know, it comes down to inches. They measure it. CDM's going to get it. Uh, well, does Terrence say that in the mic? They can't hear you. You just killed the show, just so you know. <laughs> Terrence said they forced the fumble on that play. Please. All right. <laughs> Sebastian Boydell. Now, we used to call you and him and uh, Giuliano the Twin Towers, but with the third tight end, <sighs> they might become the three Musketeers going forward. They're all back next year. The I call them the tight end trio something. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, now, now you're really killing the flow, Terrence. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm blanked on the name. We might have to restart this whole show. Cool, I'm thinking about it. All right, back to the game, Taryn. Sebastian Boydell, one of the three musketeers. Now, Caleb's buying time, looking, using those legs. He's an athlete. By the way, Russell Weir's wide open. Now, this has had to be a breakdown on coverage, but Sebastian's a big target, not a bad decision. And he gets in. And this guy just quits on the play. So at this point, taking advantage of the turnover, it's 21-7. CDM looking good, but a lot of football to go. It can't get too so, comfortable. Not getting too comfortable. How are you guys feeling right now, Breck? I feel pretty good. I feel like we took back the momentum. So everybody's excited. And yeah. We're kind of just playing off that momentum. That you can got. tell it kind of took some of the life out of your Linda when yeah. you guys went up 21-7. Mm -hmm. So once again, fourth and inches. Uh, Coach Bailey's going to stay aggressive, down 14. Emerson Tingley, Christian Brooks, that D-line's going to submarine block, and they just come over the top and stuff them. So again, another blown opportunity for Yorba Linda to get out of first, and then Cam Binion ben yeah. and Braden McKinney, two defensive linemen. Yorba Linda couldn't run, so they're going to try to throw the ball now, but to no avail, just all night long, the CDM defense was lights out. I mean, I really felt that was the difference. And again, when you got a target like Russell Weir, why not play action down the sideline? His little go route. How is he uncovered? Would set up first and goal. So at this point, CDM's looking to close it out. And White Lucas is going to follow the down, down block, then a little kick by the fullback. Was that you, Breck? Yeah. Nice, nice job. <laughs> what do they call that power left? Yeah, just power. All right, good job. Well, how do you know which way? 
<laughs> well, we, I don't want to like give up. Oh, no, no, don't say anything. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, tell me later. Off. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. might have okay, some. Uh, you, you, you're right. Well, Cerna may be watching yeah. this. Oh, 100. I would. All right. So it's 28-7. Cenium's looking good, but you know, your Belinda would fight back. Uh, but anytime they had success, it came at a price again. Christian Brooks and Dylan Lane. Oh They're no. gonna they're gonna blow this guy up on the sideline. Mm. Oh. I, I mean, he was putting guys on their back. Not big hits. I mean, it was brutal. Well, but they you, would recover. They see get the, the guys, touchdown. Cleats come off the ground. He gets them airborne. Yeah. So it's 28-14, fourth quarter, hanging around. And you know what's coming after the touchdown? Oh, uh, the onside kick, of And course. it's on turf, so you get that bounce, and there it is. <laughs> That's tough when it bounces like that. Yorba would recover. So, you know, CDM's thinking, run away the ship, and all of a sudden, they're fighting back. So fourth down, they got to have it. But how about our man, cornerback, Brady Goodall? It's going to break it up. Keeps it a 14-point game. And now there's about three minutes left, I want to say. And yeah. they're, uh, Yorba Lind is on life support. I think they had one timeout left. Uh, now, they would the get game. a stop. They're going to try again with about three minutes left, try to get a touch on pull in seven. But again, Brady gets the game. I won't say winning interception, Boom. but that interception is going to clinch it. And Watch smart. The and smart. Yeah, just the go down. Clinch yeah. the interception. And this is the best part of football. Great job, the game. Let's look at Coach uh, Griff. He's fired up. When you've got the game in hand, the clock's running down, you're celebrating with your teammates. Uh, that's about as cool as it gets. Yeah, it is. Knowing you're going to the championship game. So the good guys yeah. went. So what's your feeling at that point initially right after the game, knowing you not only avenged a tough loss last year, but you're going to the ship? We're so excited. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm excited to play in that type of game. I've never played in a big of a game as a CF championship, so I'm just super uh, it's pumped. It's going to be so awesome. So we had a chance to talk to... Uh, Caleb Annette, would you go ahead and pull up the sound call? We good? I don't know why Taryn's behind the switchboard. He's going to screw this up again. Says the, who? The I Boise we'll State out. bound Caleb Annette. And you can turn off the NFL music. We good? Caleb's got a championship to win, though, before he heads off to Boise State. That's right. Maybe State. Rewind with CIF finalist quarterback Caleb Annette. Caleb, give me your initial thoughts on the win tonight. Yeah, you know, it was... Uh, it was a good, good team win. Defense played out, uh, out of their minds, and offensive line battled, and it was, it was a good, good win. You played in last in the CF semifinals, came up a little short. Did that give you any extra motivation going into tonight's game? Yeah, that uh, that score from last year, 51-20, has been been written up everywhere. Um, so you know, a lot of, most of us were part of that team, and a lot of us remember it real, real well. So uh, it gave gave us a lot of motivation. On a personal note, do you have any pregame rituals or ceremonies you go through before practice or a game? Uh, on Fridays, I take it easy and I'll, I'll go to church and pray and then I'll. I'll Nothing wrong with that, right? All right, you're going to be practicing over Thanksgiving break. Are you okay with that? Oh, for sure, yeah. Opportunity to go win a ring. Let's do it. Well, listen, you're on the road next week at La Serena. You're yes. playing for a ring, like you said. You guys uh, got one more in you? Yeah, well, uh, got a couple more in us. All right, well, listen, congratulations on tonight's one, and best of luck next week. Thank you very much. We're not going to watch it. <clears throat> oh, that's so awesome. So, you know, you, we've interviewed Caleb before, and, like, he's always a upbeat and uh, happy guy, but you could just see there was that little extra there, like, hey, we're going to the championship. You could just see it on his face. That's so awesome. So what did you guys do after the game? We went to in and out after to celebrate. Was the just, whole team there? Yeah, most of the guys were there and just. How long did that party year. last? Probably like an hour. Okay. And then just disperse a little bit. Yeah. So. Good times. Good time at CDM so Nation. So awesome. Um, Kings going to the title game. They're there. Uh, by the way, I got to pull up a quick picture, um, and this is kind of ironic because I'm going to show you a picture of. That's the wrong one. <laughs> Tell me. No preview there. No. <laughs> Now, the guy on the right, Ted McGinley, Ted McGinley, who ironically went to Newport Harbor, and Caleb Annette, were they possibly separated at birth? Oh, I know my he's got a couple gosh. brothers and sisters. Maybe he's got an older brother. Oh, I'm just that something is to think about. Classic. That, of course, is Stan, Stan Gable, who was quarterback for Adams College from Revenge of the Nerds. Right, which was filmed at Uncle Richie's U of A. Alma mater. Good call. I forgot about University that. University of Arizona. Yeah. All right, so something to think about. Good looking guys right there. All right, <laughs> let's get into our stickers of the game. This is the right side. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. Game hey, stickers. Pretty good all, man. The guy had a yeah. broke up the fourth down play when Yorba Lind was trying to pull within seven. Could have made it real interesting late. Then he had the game clinching interception. Look at him high bu chest bumping. Uh, what, do you know what coach that is? Can you tell? Yeah, that's uh, Coach Griffin's son, Tommy Griffin. He's a safeties coach. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know his son was on the staff. I didn't know he had a kid. Yes. Yeah. Dude, Griff's my man, former 
Bruin. Yeah. We'll talk about him on, him the, on the fan zone. All right, good times. Dole, who are you going with? I went with Sebastian Boydell. You know, in that high-powered offense at CDM, they have so many weapons, and Sebastian stepped up. He had a couple big catches that game, and he had a very, uh, very, very important touchdown to help the Sea Kings win. So, Sebastian, you get my uh, helmet sticker for the week. Congratulations, man. And, uh, all the best to you in the finals. Let's get it done, Sea Kings. All right. And uh, just like that, by the way, we want to give a shout out to the Telesco family. Yes. After the game, they hosted us. Uh, a lot of the parents. It was um, great hanging out with the, uh, all the Sea King parents. Yeah, like Weir's yeah. dad and his two uncles were there. <laughs> the we Penny's. had uh, Dylan dad, the yeah. Penny's. So for those of you who don't know, Taryn is the biggest Charger fan right. on the planet. If you ever Passionate, follow him on, more pa so big, but all right, well, I digress. <laughs> If you by follow way, him on Twitter the, X, the CDM tight ends, by the way, you get play by play during the game from him because oh. he's so dialed in. So we go to uh, the Telesco's the house, Telesco family, and yeah. uh, you know, Terrence sweating profusely, and it's not even hot in the house. I'm like, Terrence, what's wrong? He's like, I'm just so nervous because he was so excited <laughs> to be there. So oh, Mr. Telesco you know, takes him to this. I, like, I had three room. layers on. Thank you very much. No, you were nervous. You told me after. I legit had three layers. I had a sweater. I had the Sunset Rewind polo and an undershirt. Well, then why didn't you take one off? <sighs> because I'm a man. I don't need to take it off. As we digress. Ooh. So Mr. Telesco took him in this room, showed him a Super Bowl ring, and yeah, Taryn was just on cloud the, nine. Uh, and Indianapolis Colts. Taryn yeah. had the courage to ask him for a picture after as we were getting ready to leave. And I think that's now your screensaver. So, yeah. you know, these that, random acts of kindness uh, w w is really uh, appreciated. So thank you to the family for not only hosting us, but giving Taryn yeah, the freedom no. of a lifetime. Yes, thank you. Chargers Telesco got a big family. game this week at Green Bay, so... I'm this close to becoming a Charger fan just because, you know, it's never been my team. I don't, I've never not liked them, but... When we get opportunities to meet people uh, like and, that. And the Telesco family was so gracious and nice and just wonderful people. Well, you know, the thing about the Chargers, they do stuff for the community. Like, they, they're yeah, involved absolutely. with the All-Star Game. Right. They have that Coach of the Week mm -hmm. and the Coach of the Year. I mean, they've yep. done a lot to endure themselves to the SoCal community. Yes. So you got to give them a lot of credit for that. And, you know, it's a grassroots effort to build a solid fan base. So They, they have a very community-based uh, football team, and they, they do a lot for the community. And you When know. he's speaking at the, uh, Mr. Telesco at the CIF banquet, CIF banquet, correct. he had to do it the previous year after you guys had lost in the semifinals. Yeah. He's like thinking, I can't believe I've got to go to this. But he stepped up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not easy when your son loses in the semifinals. Yeah. But uh, shout-out to them, and uh, good times here in SoCal. Well, that's going to wrap up another edition. I can't believe it. What is this, uh, week 13, episode 14, already in the book? So remember to quick. subscribe. Follow us on X, sun, at sunset underscore rewind, and as well on uh, Instagram, sunset underscore rewind. Thank you to Taryn. Thank you to uh, Cole. Thanks to everybody else who's contributed, Uncle Richie, all the fans out there. Most of all, the players, coaches, and families of all these uh, wonderful athletes in the Sunset League. Breck, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Hey, do you want to stick around for the fan zone? Yeah, that around. Out tomorrow. All right. Wait, wait, hold on. I actually now have the official name for CDM's tight end trio. Okay. The CDM tight end trio trifecta. Oh. What do you think, Breck? Should we vote I on like this? It. I like it. All right, he's cool. All right, Taryn. <laughs> yeah, as long as Breck's good with it, yeah. then, then we're good with it. I had something else prior, but eh. All right. Thanks All right. for well, joining us. Note. We'll see you again next week. Go see Kings. Take care, and God bless. Uh, can you cue that UCLA song again there, uh, Cole Man? I gotta hear it. <laughs> We're malfunctioning. Sorry. Oh yeah, of course. How how, how convenient. Yeah. <laughs>